What's up, Ryan K here uh, with Refer.io and GBT for Work. And today I'm gonna take about 10, maybe 15 minutes and unpack for you how to create your own work Yoda. Uh, just, I know it's kind of cliche and I know it's a funny term to use, but if you think about it in any hero's journey, whether it's Harry Potter or Star Wars or the Avengers, almost all heroes have a, a mentor, a somebody like Yoda who, who teaches and trains them and helps them along the way. It doesn't mean that you have to have somebody like that in your life to get there to where you're trying to go. It just means it's a whole lot easier if you do. It, it's a whole lot fewer mistakes that you make and, and problems you create by having somebody who's older, wiser, smarter, and can kind of light the path for you. More importantly, it's great if they're more collaborative. Look, most people look at the experience and success of, I've had at Applicant Pro and at Refer um, and say, well, it's because you went to college and got an MBA and that's why you're successful as a business entrepreneur, uh, growing and scaling to tens of thousands of clients and 300 employees. And the answer is actually no. Very little of what I learned in college have I used in the last 20 years. But what I've done since college has been a whole lot of additional learning and growing, uh, reading books, thousands and thousands of books, listening to podcasts and audio file, uh, being a member of mastermind groups and, and having mentors. I'm pretty sure in the last 20 years, I've spent over $300,000 on improving myself, my knowledge, my ability to show up at work. Now, the downside of all of that effort it took was I wasn't just that I had to consume all that information. I had to figure out what to do with it. It wasn't until maybe about four or five years ago that I got my first mentor. And the real value of paying for that mentor instead of all the reading I was doing is he could point me in the right direction. He could save me a ton of time by hearing my problem and pointing me in the direction of where to go to learn instead of me learning everything and then figuring out how to apply it. Now, along comes ChatGPT, and I, I can tell you one of the most overlooked and one of the most powerful ways to use ChatGPT is to use it as your work your work buddy, your work consultant, your work assistant, that, that Yoda who's there to help you become great at your job. And so regardless of how long you've been in a job, regardless how good or bad most of the time the training program was, your boss was, your manager was, trust me, uh, you need some outside help. And ChatGPT is the cheapest, if not free way to do this. So when you think about what does it take to become awesome at a job, any job from barista to CEO, well, it really rolls down to these three things. Number one, we have to master our job and our role, the daily duties and tasks and projects that we work on, right? We have to master and get great at those things. But number two, we then have to uh, zoom out a little and deepen our knowledge, kind of can we see outside of our role, our function, our department? Can we see the entire organization? Can we see the people who impact us and that we impact the, the other players in the process, the other teammates that, that we're handing the ball to or receiving the ball from, uh, the coaches and, and all those types of things at the organization? Can we understand kind of the more, more overall inner workings of the company and how it all works together? And then finally, number three, can we expand our horizons? Can we look outside of our company to the greater industry, to our competitors, to the different business models out there? Can we look outside of even our industry into other industries that are similar or other situations that are similar to learn, to understand, and then to come back and build that into whatever it is we're working on? Now, all of that has been available for a lot for since the internet, right? In my time, it was Google. I could Google all this stuff. I could Google and watch and read and listen to all these pieces. But where ChatGPT really is powerful is its ability to take that information and number one, organize it for you, clean it up. Number two, to help you take and gather all that research and merge it together, number one. Number two, to take it and brainstorm out specifically for your existing situation. To be able to say not just, I love this book, I want to learn about it, but I love this book and the concepts from this book, but I am a marketing manager at a certain type of company. How would I apply it? What are my, let me, help me brainstorm on the different ways that I could use this knowledge, this framework, this book, this concept in my own current job. And that right there is way powerful. Number three is the ability to compare and contrast options. Look, there is no right answer to most business problems. There's a couple different options of what we could do and there's pros and cons of each. And we've got to find a way to, pick the one with the, the lowest risk and the highest reward. We've got to be able to organize it in priority of what should we do today versus putting off. And then we've got to roadmap it out and actually create a roadmap, a project, a, you know, step-by-step -step tasks, all those kind of things. 
this is one of the most powerful and most overlooked uses of ChatGPT. So how do you go about doing that? Well, it's not as simple as just giving it a prompt. You can't just go to ChatGPT and say, hey, I'm a marketing manager for a, a job seeker, job board platform, help me do my job. That's just way too vague. Instead, we have to treat it like we're actually collaborating with it. Like this one thread, and I'm gonna jump into ChatGPT in a second here and show you how to do it. But we start off with what type of coach do you need? Hey, I want you to be my coach to do X. Now, I might have a whole bunch of different strings of chats for all the different coaches I have at work. I might have a manager coach. I might have a team coach. I might have a project coach. I might have a process coach. I might have a sales one, a marketing one, etc. I can create as many as I want, and I return to that thread when I have a question specifically about that. So what type of coach do I need? Number two, what's my current role? In, in my job, I have wear lots of different hats, so it's kind of what hat do I have on? I'm, I'm doing the marketing role or the sales role. I'm in customer service, right? What is my current role? Number three, who do I work for? What type of company? What size of company? What industry? What? How do we fit into the overall kind of like competitive landscape? Who are our customers? What are we trying to accomplish? Number four is what are my work goals? What am I working on? What am I trying to do? What project? What, what problem? What challenge? And then finally, number five, what do I need help with? These are the steps that you would go about asking a friend for help, asking your boss for help if they weren't too busy a lot of times, or if we might feel stupid about asking it. This is why ChatGPT is so powerful in being able to level up our skill, our knowledge, our, our you know, kind of, again, collaborating, not doing it for you, doing it with you. And so let me jump into ChatGPT and I'll show you exactly how you set this up. Just one note, make sure you subscribe to our channel, make sure you share it with other people. Lots and lots of cool content, leave me comments. I read all of them, I'm more than happy to respond or create new videos based on it. So let's jump into ChatGPT and I'll show you how I actually walk this entire process. You can see my initial prompt here. Will you act as my creative and knowledgeable work coach, right? And clearly if I just said that, it would say yes, but it doesn't know anything I do. And that's the thing to keep in mind. ChatGPT knows everything about everything, but nothing about me individually. It doesn't know my job my past, my current job, what I'm trying to do. It doesn't know my employer. If I just ask it to do something, I don't give it those specifics. If I'm too general, then I'm going to get back too general of information. So I actually said, hey, you know, I want to learn and become great at the topic of marketing and demand generation, specifically when it comes to here's my industry. I want to understand, you know, now I could copy and paste in my job description in here, but I can tell you most of the time it's more, I need to give it specific things. I want to understand how to do these certain things. I want help to help my own organization. I Can you be my super creative coach and mentor, et cetera, et cetera. This is my initial kind of setting the stage for this thread. I can go over here on the left, name it something so I remember it, so I can come back at any point and say, hey, I'm back, remember everything above. Now let's you know help you with this next project. Now, ChatGPT is going to come back and give me a whole bunch of different ideas of what it can help me with, which is awesome, but I still haven't given it enough information. So my next step, going back to those steps, was now I'm going to tell it where I work. Hey, I work for Refer.io. Uh, you know, we do this, we manage job alerts and followers and blah, 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 blah. Here's all the things that we do. Here's our goal and our vision and mission. Now, if you don't know this stuff, ask your boss, ask your manager, ask a coworker, go copy and paste it off your website, feed it in here so that you can say, hey, we're trying to do this for these people in this way. And that's really kind of what this next step is. That then says, okay, so here, that's great approach. Let's come more specific about some of the strategies that you might want to use. Now, my next prompt is, okay, so if I'm new to this job in marketing, which I would almost always use that concept, starting from scratch with no previous experience, can you be my trainer and mentor? The reason why I start from scratch is I don't want to over, I don't want to have it overlook anything. And can I can always go, okay, now I want to level up you know, I'm now, uh, you know, more progressed in marketing. Now that I know this, what are the next steps? And so again, it's going to come back and say, here's some of the things that you need to learn about. These are the things that you're going to use. Project execution, feedback, content creation, marketing strategy, right? Now, this is where we make our jump and it gets really, really powerful. Is I ask this question, you'll see if you watch any of my videos, I come back to it over and over and over again. What would you need to know about my company or target customers or product or service offering to help you better collaborate with me? Now, the, the, the way I take this a step further, my next one should be, you know, where can I research to find these questions or who could I interview to ask about them? 
So this first one said, here's the things I need to, that it needs to know to help me. This next one says, here's where we would find it out. And the last one almost always is, can you create a list of 10 interview questions in order for me to gather this information? I might ask it to give me a list of interview questions based on who I should ask it to. Now, the reason why I do this is I'm a talker, not a typer, and you're probably a talker and not a typer too. And so if you want the fastest way to feed ChatGPT this information, I'm going to take and hop on Zoom and interview somebody. And I'm going to record it and transcribe it into text and feed it back in. I might also use the Otter app, otter.ai. Um, and I use that all the time to record conversations or even recording me interviewing myself because instead of ending up with, with answers to these questions that are four or five words long, they end up being four or five paragraphs long. And that feeds a lot of that context into ChatGBT. At this point, I've now fed all this information in. It's given me all these questions that I can go and answer, right? And so I would just literally go and do those interviews. I would interview clients and customers and coworkers, anybody that I could find the information from. I would record it and then I'd come back into this uh, thread and say, Here's the transcript from my interview with about, right? And I just tell it with this type of person about this type of situation. And I would paste in the transcript. I wouldn't edit it or clean it up or, or format anything like that. I just shove all the raw text in here. Now at this point, it comes back though. And once I fed it all of this stuff, now I actually say, okay, how can you help me, right? Provide me 10 ChatGPT questions that I can ask to help drill down to better and understand certain things. And it gives me back these questions, right? Here's 10 questions for each area that I could drill down with um, when it comes to learning a new function at work, right? And so I just keep kind of going through. At this point, I could ask it literally any of these questions. How can we gather constructive feedback from customers and stakeholders regarding our marketing efforts? If I just went into this thread um, at refer.io and asked it that, it's now going to start the flow of helping me do this. Identify my objectives, select feedback methods, create targeted surveys. Now, understand I almost always follow this model right here, right? Number one is research. So I would say, well, what information? So I'd come back to and say, well, what information would you need to know? Where can I get it from? How can I, who could I gather it from or who could I interview? What are the interview questions? That's how I do research every time. Secondly is brainstorm. Once I feed that information into ChatGPT, I'm now going to say, okay, based off all the information from my research, help me brainstorm what my options are for doing this. Now, the third one, compare, I'm going to say, well, of these options, I really like option one and option three, compare and contrast, you know, the, the pros and cons of them, the, you know, how hard it will be, how likely we get good results, etc. Help me make the case for which of these two we should run. And then finally, once I picked one, I can say, all right, I want to run option one, create for me a roadmap, create for me a plan of attack, create for me a list of steps to take, create for me the content to a presentation to get my team on board, create for me a proposal. I will just keep going around this, this kind of uh, four step process over and over and over again, anytime I come back here and grab my next project. So if I grab my next project, from here, or if I came up with a new one that my boss wanted me to work on, or I could ask ChatGPT, what kind of projects should we be working on right now? Or what are my options? Then I'm gonna run that same framework, research. What would you need to know to pick the best way to go about doing this? What would you need to know about my company, my job, our customers, what we're currently doing, et cetera? You know, brainstorm, help me kind of disseminate all this information, pick what my options are, help me evaluate and decide the best one compare, hey, help me compare and contrast what we should do and, and why I should pick that one and then create. Create the roadmap, create the steps, create the project, create the sprints, create the actions to take, create the content, whatever the case may be. I will continue to go around and around that flow. Hopefully you found this super valuable. If you wanna actually copy and paste the prompts that I created for it, just go check out our blog. There should be a link in the video description or if you're watching this on our blog, just scroll down and you'll see the different prompts that I actually use. And I use this same exact setup to create multiple different coaches specific to the different things that I'm working on at any given time. Thanks so much for watching today. Please follow, please subscribe, please ask any questions you have. You can reach me at ryan at chatgbt or gbtforwork.io. Again, that's ryan at 
GBT, GPT for work.io, or message me through YouTube, leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll talk to you later.